So, you want to learn how to use SimBrief. Well, I've got you covered. In this video, we'll be covering what SimBrief is, how to set up your SimBrief flight plan, and how to read your SimBrief flight plan. What is SimBrief? Well, SimBrief is a tool used by flight centers all around the world to plan their flights. It contains all sorts of useful information, such as, but not limited to, your weather, speeds, altitude, flight time, required fuel, the number of passengers on board, a detailed flight plan, and what time it should be when you get to each waypoint, and much, much more. So maybe it's a little complicated, but by the end of this tutorial you'll be fluent in the world of SimBrief. First of all, you're going to want to click on the Dispatch option. Then click on New Flight. Now that we're here, you want to enter the airline that you want to fly for. So British Airways would be BA, Ryanair is RYR, and so on. I'll try and link a table in the description for all the airline codes. Then you add your flight number here. Really, this can be any four digit number. But if you want to go for maximum realism, then you can add the flight number of the aircraft you are imitating. Then you want to add the ICAO code for your departure airport. Next to this, you want to enter the code for your arrival airport. I'm going to be flying from Heathrow to JFK, so that would be Echo Golf Lima Lima in the departure box and Kilo Julio Fox Rock Kilo in the arrivals box. You can leave your alternate airport on auto or enter one of your choice. I'm going to be leaving it on auto. Then you want to add the date and time for your departure. This is the time you take off, not to be confused with when you start up or load in. I like to make this time about half an hour after when I intend to load into the sim, but you can make it any time you want. Then you want to add the aircraft you're going to be flying, or at least one that's as close as possible. This will help SimBrief determine which run runways you should take off from, how long your flight should be, how much fuel you'll need, along with speeds and altitudes. I'm going to be flying in the Heavy Division 787-10, so I'll add this into the selection. Then you can scroll down and change any of this. You can give yourself a slightly longer flight, change your departure runway, change your arrival runway, or the number of passengers, even the route itself. I'm just going to leave it all to what it defaulted to. Once you've done all that, we can generate our flight plan. Now that we're here, the main things you need to look out for are the cruise altitude, which is this number here. That's basically your altitude you'll be climbing to and descending from. You'll likely spend the majority of your flight at this altitude. You also need to look at your block fuel, which is here. This is basically the amount of fuel you'll need for your flight, including go around, taxi, and going to your alternate airport. You also need to look out for your map, which you can find by scrolling down a little. If you want to use your map for VFR, you can zoom in and look at different rivers, streams, and lakes. Or you can use IFR by using the charts below. Normally we would fly VFR in smaller aircraft like your Cessna 152, or during your takeoff and landing. You can, however, hover your cursor over these little square dots, and it will tell you the altitude you're supposed to be at, the speed you're supposed to be at, and how long your flight will have been when you get there. If you scroll down a little, you can find all sorts of information. You can also scroll to the top and click the PDF option. There is all sorts of information here. One such piece of information is your ATC call sign. This is what ATC should call you. This may take some setting up in certain flight simulators. If you are printing this off, you should enter your estimated takeoff time here. If you see any cautions here under dispatch remarks, then you may want to consider replanning your flight. Below this, you can then find your block fuel again. In the selection, you can find your fuels in far more detail. This is the fuel needed for taxiing. You can also find the fuel needed for your main route and also the amount of fuel needed to alternate to your backup airport. If you are printing this off, you should sign on this dotted line to confirm that you accept the flight plan. Below this, you can find your route to your backup airport and your runway there. Below this, you can find your routing. It starts with your departure airport, and then a forward slash, and then your runway. Then it goes through your routing. These are the letters and numbers you need to enter into your flight management computer. Then it has your arrival airport forward by a forward slash, and your arrival runway. If you're printing this off, you should fill in the time of your pushback here in UTC. The takeoff time here in UTC, the landing time here in UTC, and the time you get to your gate here in UTC. And the total time here in hours and minutes. You can also fill in the number of passengers here, the weight of your cargo in thousands of kilograms, and your total payload here in thousands of kilograms. Below this, you can find a detailed flight plan. These are your waypoints. This number is the time from your previous waypoint in hours and minutes. Below this is the total time from takeoff that you should get to the waypoint. This number is the flight level you should be at when you arrive at this waypoint. It is your altitude above sea level divided by 100. Below this is the minimum safe altitude at this waypoint. If you go below this, you could crash into a building or a mountain. Below this is the distance in nautical miles from the previous waypoint. On the right of this is the remaining distance from your arrival airport from when you get to that waypoint. This number is how fast you should be going when you get to this waypoint, relative to the speed of sound. This is called your Mach number. This is the estimated temperature in degrees Celsius over this waypoint. To the right of this is the estimated fuel on board. Below this is the area where you can write the actual fuel on board if you printed this out. At the bottom of this document, you can find your vertical profile. 
This tells you the attitudes you should be at when you get to each waypoint in a visual way, relative to the winds and terrain. Now you should be able to successfully set up flight plans in Simbrief and then read them. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please remember to like and subscribe. If not, then leave a dislike, that's fine. I just ask that you leave a comment telling me how I can improve. Or drop me an email, my email is on the screen now. Or, alternatively, you could fill out the Google form, which is the first link in the description. If you have any questions, then don't hesitate to ask them in the comments. I will reply. With that, snake out.